All right, oh, welcome back. I hope you guys have been having a good week. We're gonna jump into Revelation eight through nine today. And I wanna thank you guys for following along. I pray that this can open up your mind a little bit and you grow your relationship strong with Elohim. But right now we live in uncertain times and this this end of the book, this end of an age may be coming sooner than, than you think. And I don't want it to sneak up on you. I don't want you to be caught off guard. Let's start. And when he opened the seventh seal, there came to be a silence in the heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven messenger who stand before Elohim. And to them were given seven trumpets. And another messenger came and stood at the slaughter place holding a golden censer. And much incense was given to him that he should offer it with the prayers of all the set apart ones upon the golden slaughter place which was given before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the set apart ones went up before Elohim from the hand of the messenger and the messenger took the censer and filled it with the fire from the slaughter place and threw it to the earth and there were noises and thunders and lightnings and earthquakes and the seven messengers who held the seven trumpets prepared themselves for a sound and the first messenger sounded and then there came to be a hail of fire mixed with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burned and all the green grass was burned up and the second messenger sounded and what looked like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed and the third messenger sounded and a great star fell from the heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter and the fourth messenger sounded and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. And a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid heaven, crying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those dwelling upon earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three messengers who are about to sound. And the fifth messenger sounded, and I saw a star from the heaven, which had fallen to earth, and the key to the pit of the deep was given to him. And he opened the pit of the deep, and smoke went out of the pit, like a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun was darkened, also the air, because of the smoke of the pit. And out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and authority was given to them as the scorpions of the earth to pose possess authority and it was said to them that they shall not harm the grass of the earth or any green matter or any tree but only those men who do not have the seal of Elohim upon their foreheads and it was given to them that they should not kill them but torture them for five months and the torture was like a torture of a scorpion when it stings a man and in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall long to die but death shall flee from them and the locusts looked like horses prepared for battle and on their heads were crowns like gold and their faces were like the faces of men they had hair like woman's hair and their teeth were like lying in seed and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their, their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses running to battles. Can you just think about how freaking scary that is? 
like alien versus predator type stuff. And they have tails like scorpions and stings. And in their tails is the authority to harm men for five months. Five months. And it says that men shall seek death, but they shall not find it. They shall long for death, but they shall not find it. Wow. And they have over them a sovereigner, the messenger of the pit of the deep, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. But in Greek, he has the name Apollon. The first woe is past. See, two woes are still coming after this. And the six messengers sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden slaughter place, which is before Elohim, saying to the six messenger who had the trumpet, Release the four messengers, those having been bound at the great rivers of Euphrates, and the four messengers... Those having prepared the hour of the day and the month of the year were released to kill a third of mankind. And the number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. 200 million horsemen. And this is how I saw the horses in the vision and those who sat on them having breastplates of fiery red a hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire and smoke and sulfur, and a third of mankind was killed, these three plagues, by fire and smoke and the sulfur which came out of their mouths. For the authority of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails, for the tails are like serpents having heads. And with them they do harm. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent for the works of their hands. That they should not worship the demons and idols of gold and silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which are neither able to see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent for their murders, nor their drug sorceries, nor their whoring, nor their thieves. I don't know about you guys, but that's not the kind of SHTF I'm trying to live through. I'm not trying to live through any SHTF, but if I had to pick, that's not it. That's not it. I'm trying to be the ones of the many nations of all creeds and all tongues and all peoples going to heaven before all this happens, right? A lot of people don't believe in the rapture. Well, never says the rapture in the heaven. Well, that's what they're talking about. The number is too many to even count of people of all nations, all peoples from all places in heaven, around the throne, clothed in white, covered with the blood of the lamb. They come before all this. They are taken out of heaven before all of this nonsense. Before they are tortured for their sins, for their drug sorcery, their murders, their hoeing of their thieves. I'll tell you, I've done four, three of those four things. I've never murdered, but I've whored, I've stolen, and I've done drugs. Now, thankfully, I've been washed and redeemed. I no longer have a porn addiction, I no longer smoke weed, and I no longer steal. And these three are all stories of different times, for a different time and another day. But we go out and look into this world right now and we talk about murderers, active shooters. It's a big deal in today's society. The killing of the innocents. What is murder? The murder is the content of someone's heart. Murder is not the preserving of life. If I was in the military or if I was a police officer, 
and I'm pursuing a threat and I put down the threat, I neutralize the threat, is that murder? Or is murder walking into Walmart and every single person you see shooting him? Or like the guy in New Zealand goes into a Muslim mosque and just guns down tens of people, 20, 30, 40 people. What's, what's murder? I'd say the second one's murder. The first one is preserving of life. It's all about the content of someone's heart. That's what murder is. What is whoring? Is whoring laying in bed with your wife? Or is whoring laying in bed with a woman that is not your wife? Here. What is, what is stealing? Is stealing working a good job, making great money? Or is stealing scamming people, breaking into houses and cars? And all four of those things, which we'll touch on the, the Torah Bible study that I'll be doing soon. Those are things that will prohibit you from inheriting the kingdom of Elohim. God forbids you do those things. And if you do those things, there's only one way to get to heaven. And it says it in the New Testament, by the way, for the Christians that don't really like the Old Testament. Is by being washed and sanctified and being redeemed by the word and the name of Jesus. And we'll get into that during the Torah Bible study. I really hope you tune in for that video. I really truthfully do. I mean, those churches that have the pride flags and say Jesus accepts everyone... Yes, you're right. Jesus does accept everyone. He accepts everyone that repents and turns away into shuvas. Not those who effeminate. What does effeminate mean? Men acting like women, and that's in Hebrew. This was in the Bible, written in Greek, written in Hebrew, written in all these languages of the past, and it says effeminate. Men who act like women, women who act like men. Hey, transgenders, gays, anyone? Listen, as a human being, I have no problem with the gays. But as a religion standpoint, my God has a problem with them, right? Does that mean we go out and we fucking kill a bunch of gay people? No, that's disgusting. They are humans. They are people. They are God's creation. We're supposed to love on them. We're supposed to bring them into the church. But we do not lie to them. Hey, God loves you. He loves you so much that he wrote in his book that if you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. He tells you what will happen. Script by script. If you commit adultery, what's going to happen? Script by script. And then he tells you what to do if you do those things. Not if you do those things, you'll never inherit the Elohim. Because if he said that, I would never inherit the kingdom of Elohim. You would never inherit the kingdom of Elohim because you, through that screen, is not perfect. But we don't lie to them and say, it's okay to God to be gay. It's okay to man. It is. It is. It's very much okay to men. I'm, I'm a true believer in the freedoms that America gives us. You have the freedom to be gay. You do. And I'll defend that I'll defend that as much as I'll defend your right to religion because that's your right, okay? Do I agree with it? Religiously, no, I don't. But will I defend it and will I love you? Will I have hatred for you? No, I won't have hatred for you. I will defend it and I will love it. Yes, I will do those things because I love you as a human being. And I will pray for you behind the scenes and hope that God can work one day in your life. 
We are not the judge and executioner as human beings. We are not the persecutors as human beings. I pray that you guys think about this kind of stuff. Think about those torches that were just named. An end of an age is coming, whether or not in our lifetime, but it will be in the, the soon generations after us, our kids and our family members. How are you going to raise up your kids to be? Raise up your kids the way that they should go so they do not depart from it when they're older. Raise up your kids so they can preach to the next generation and open up their eyes. Don't fall for the wickedness. Don't be deceived just because men says that's okay. The traditions and dogmas of men is what has gotten us here in the first place. Now, do we fucking hate gay people? No. We should love on them and care for them and preach to them. Do unto you what you would do unto others what you would want to be done to you. Do you want someone to persecute you because you're a Christian? No. Should you persecute someone because they're a transgender? Hey, no. No matter how much you don't agree with it. That's for the judge and executioner. That's for Elohim. Your job is to be a fisher of men. To be a disciple. To be a teacher. To be a preacher. Speak the word in love, not in anger. But don't tell them it's okay. Sometimes you got to be blunt, but in love. A great mentor of mine, he says, hey, brother, I love you, but. It's not, hey, you're fucking up. It's, hey, I love you. And I'm going to tell you this because I love you. Hey, I love you, but I saw you on Instagram. And when you went to your, your search page, there's a bunch of naked women. Right? See, it's better to cut off your eye than to lose your whole body. It's better to cut off your right hand than to lose your whole body. See, in a day and age, most people aren't going to cut off their hand and eye, right? I had an addiction to porn. I didn't cut off my hand or my eye. You know what I did? I deleted the apps that fed into that. I no longer have an Instagram. My Instagram is ran by my wife. So cut these things out. If you have friends that go to these gay pride parades and all these things, hey, take a step back from them lovingly and preach to them. Maybe not go to, there's one in Nashville called Play, right? And I have brothers and friends that used to be friends that I still love and I still pray for, but I don't really hang out with them because they've chosen that life. They like to go to the clubs where women are half naked and have fun and, and find another girl to lay in bed with. Thankfully, that's not my life anymore. I've given my life to the kingdom, but that, does, that, that doesn't mean I don't pray for them or invite them to my home to preach to them and hang out with them and have a fire and drink a couple of drinks, but not get drunk. Don't turn your back on the nations. Go out and preach. Jesus came and sat with sinners. And the priest asked his disciples and he overheard and they said, hey, why does your master sit with sinners and pagans and tax collectors? And he overhears him and he says, hey, do the healthy need a physician or the sick? Who needs a saving? Someone who already believes or someone who doesn't believe. You are called to be a fisher of men. Take that proudly. Find your calling. It's been, in, it's in, been inside of you since the beginning. Father, I pray for this generation and the sick. 
Father, I pray for healing. Father, I pray for the unsaved and I pray for saving, Father. I pray that as a church, your church, we can go stronger and be more deliberate and take action and not be so scared of confrontation and actually live by your word, Father. I pray that it does not move us to anger, but it moves us to love, knowing that we have the ability to save. Father, and I pray for those people at an end of an age that are being tortured, Father. Father, I pray that some of them to Shuva and understand that you're the Lord. And they end the tormenting, Father. For that, Father, but I know what is written is written and it shall be done, Father. But I pray for those souls. And I pray for the generations and generations to come before it, Father. I pray that they can have saving and not fall into the witched depth of the pit, Father. Father, I pray for the people living in whoring and adultery and thieving and murders. Father, I pray that you can raise them up and be mighty warriors of God and they shall teshuva. Saul to Paul, Father, in your name. Amen. Well, thank you guys for following along. I pray that this does you well. Share this with others if you think they need it. Subscribe, like, do all the things. I'll still be here if you don't. Shalom.